Hello lovely people, today we'll be talking about gains. It's one of the subjects that I never covered because to me personally it's not important but people keep asking and asking and asking. So today, how to set your gains. So if you're watching a video about gains, probably you've seen tens of them because everybody does this. Everybody has a video how to set gains. Everybody has a scope. They blah, 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 blah. Pretty much everything is the same. However, I want to show you something a little bit different and just to give you some rough guidelines where your gain should be set even before you touch the oscilloscope or scientons or that kind of stuff. So gain is a knob on an amplifier such as this one that tells you your input sensitivity and what you're trying to do when you're setting your gains is to match the input sensitivity of the amplifier with the output of your source. In my case, it's going to be a DSP. If for you, it could be a head unit or literally anything else that you feed your amplifiers. So first of all, as a guideline, you have to know the voltage that your source puts out and the voltage that your amplifier takes in. If you have a matching set you don't have to set the gains at all just leave them alone the problem is when you have your source voltage lower than the maximum input of the amplifiers so amplifier sensitivity you can find it in a spec sheet or most amplifiers will have it mentioned on the gain knob so this is an old school amplifier and you can see if i set the gains all the way down the maximum voltage is two volts so that means that if I send two volts from my source into this amplifier, I'm going to max out however it gives out wattage-wise. So if I have a source of two volts or more, I'm all set. Gains all the way down and I don't have to touch anything. If my source has lower voltage than two volts, for example, one volt Android head unit or whatever, then I will need to increase my gain something i'm going to show you how much and how but you need to increase your gain only if your source has a lower voltage than the input sensitivity of the amplifier so this is an old school amplifier it takes two volts most amplifier these days will take up to four volts so this is still an old school amplifier but it's a bit newer and it takes four volts now some amplifiers such as this down for sound easy dsp if i'm gonna show you over here you can see here it says six volts yeah some amplifiers will need 10 volts some need 12 volts so if i have an amplifier such as this that takes six volts and i have a source that gives out only four such as this dsp in order to max it out i need to turn the gain up now if i'm going to connect this dsp that gives out four volts with this amplifier that takes in four volts I turn the gains all the way down and I don't have to worry about it at all. Kinda. Just because if you watch any of my previous videos, when we use EQ, we are kind of messing it up a little bit. Just because if I'm going to show you my EQ for, for example, woofer, you see it's not totally flat. Same with the subwoofers. Again, it's not totally flat like this one. You can see some dips and some peaks on the EQ. So the question arises all the time, what frequency sine tone should I choose to set up my gains? What you have to do, first of all, you have to identify the weakest link in your whole thing, which speaker plays the lowest, and if you need to increase your gain on that. When we EQ, when we match our responses to the targets, most of the time we will have to pull the subwoofer down because subwoofer is the thing that always has much more energy that we actually need. My philosophy is totally different. My philosophy is that if you need to turn your gains up, then you need a source with a higher voltage. So if you have a DSP that outputs only two volts and amplify it, that takes in four, upgrade it to a DSP that gives out four volts. Now, for example, this, it takes in six, this gives out four. So if I would have a Helix DSP that outputs eight volts on RCAs, 
then all the gains on this amplifier will have to be down. So for this, I'm just going to disregard all my philosophies and I'm just going to show you why is it important to do the gains as a last thing and how to actually do them correctly. So for this purpose, I have my laptop connected to the DSP via Bluetooth so I can send whatever signal I want, a sign tone, whatever DBFS I want. I have a voltmeter just to check the voltage and I have a little scope just to show you the clipping. Some people ask about this scope. This is the cheapest scope that you can find on Amazon, on AliExpress or whatever. I pay like 15 pounds for it years ago. Now it's like 20 bucks or something. Any scope will do. You don't need to have an expensive scope. Even the cheapest scope will do that. So just to show you how it looks like, I have the scope connected to one of the outputs, which is in my case, the output number one. I have on this output, you can see no crossovers, no nothing. Everything is totally flat, no EQ. If I'm gonna play a 1000 Hertz sine tone at zero dBFS, I'm gonna play it now. And we can see we have 11.6 volts on the speaker output. And we have this nice little sine tone. The sine wave is not clipped, everything is fine, just because it's not at max power. So if you watched any of the previous videos, at this point, when you're playing a sine tone, they always say increase the gain until it starts clipping and then kind of back out and then it's gonna be fine. So let me demonstrate. Let me try to demonstrate with one hand. I'm gonna take a screwdriver. I'm gonna put it next to the channel one, which is this one and I can increase or decrease the gain. So if I'm gonna increase the gain, it's going up, 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 and then it starts clipping, so I'm gonna back out, and this is my maximum output for this channel. So I'm gonna back up just like this. So this is how you, how everybody tells you to set up gains. Now, let's have a look at the EQ and stuff. I do apologize for the glare because that's what happens when you film outside. However, I hope you're gonna be able to see everything. So if we're gonna have a look at our EQ for the subwoofers or whatever, my EQ for the subwoofer is like this. So it's not a flat line. So now the question arises, which frequency should we choose if we wanna set gains to have the maximum output out of our amplifier? So if we're gonna have a look at here, it's very difficult to see, but you see 30, 40, 50, 60. So at 60, where this number six is close to there, this is our maximum output for this channel. And if I'm gonna choose 30, 40, 50 hertz, 50 hertz is close to minus four or minus five dB. So whenever you're choosing a frequency, you need to select the frequency that is the highest closer to zero. If I'm gonna check, for example, this mid-range here, I have this boost. So if I would set my gains using one kilohertz sine tone, which would be here, yeah, it would be in the negative. So if I'm gonna set my gains to this, to maximum output, all the tones that are playing two and a half K over there, those will be clipped at zero dBFS. So in case of this one, I would need to set my gains using 2.2 kilohertz sine tone. So let me demonstrate this. If I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna just choose two random bands, one is up, one is down, the other one is up, just like that. So we can see that at 500 hertz, we have our gain in the negative, and at 800, 900 hertz, we have it at positive. So let's have a look what happens. Let me select 450 hertz, which is at the lowest. If I'm gonna select 450 hertz, I'm gonna play zero dBFS tone, just like that. I have a sine wave over there. The scope is not catching the trigger, but when I'm gonna start to increase it, you will be able to see that, so let me grab this. Okay, let's increase it. There we go, it caught it up, now it's fine. So if I'm gonna keep increasing until we have clipping, there we go, that's clipping. So I'm gonna back up just to have it not clipped, just like that. So now my gains are set for this channel at 450 hertz and it's not clipping at all. Now watch what happens if instead of 450, I'm gonna put 900 hertz. So 900, I'm gonna click enter and watch this one. It's clipping and you can hear it. Eee! 
yeah, it's a massive, massive clip. So the lesson from this is whenever you're choosing a frequency to set your gains on, look at your EQ and at the same time at the channel gain because my channel gain on this one is minus 4 dB. So if you have... For example, this one is 0 dB, this is going to be higher than that one. So it's not as simple as taking 50 Hz or 1000 Hz sine tone and turning until you see clip wave. You have to know your gain structure in the DSP as well. You have to take into account your channel gain and your EQ band. So for example, if I would take this subwoofer, it looks like I would need to choose a frequency of 60 Hz, then it's going to be this maximum. However, if I'm going to set the 60 Hz as 0 dB FS, my channel gain is minus 10 dB. So if I'm going to set my gains with 0 dB FS, 60 Hz tone, in reality, I will be setting my gains with 10 dB overlap. Now, maybe you're going to ask why I have minus 10 dB on my subwoofer. Just because this subwoofer is rated at 1000 watts and this amplifier outputs 3000 watts, close to 3000, like 2.7. That's why I need to tone it down way down in order not to blow this subwoofer. And my system is set up in this way, like all the speakers that I can have my gains all the way down to zero. And I still need to pull the channel gain down, even if this outputs four volts, this takes in six, just because I have so much headroom that I will never ever in my life clip this amplifier. This is the main reason why in SQ we choose massive, massive amplifiers. Now we can very briefly talk about the power requirements, how big of an amplifier you need. I'm gonna show you something. So in order to do this, I need to unscrew this and this, and let's have a look at the bottom what we have here. Okay, so here I have this amplifier. So this amplifier is being fed by the last four channels of the DSP and this feeds my tweeters and mid-ranges. This amplifier outputs 30 watts. That's it, 30 watts. So for those that say you need 100, 150 watts for the tweeters, that is bull. Because with 30 watts of clean output on the tweeters and on the mid-ranges, you can go deaf in my car and you are not going to clip the amplifier. Question, why? Because of the sensitivity. Because my speakers are super sensitive. This one is 93 dB sensitive. This one is 93 dB. This one is 93 point something. Everything is so sensitive that you need very little power to make them super loud. Now, what does it mean 93 dB sensitive? That means that these tweeters and mid-ranges, if I'm going to give them one single watt, they're going to be 93 dB loudness. If I'm going to add the other side, which is a bit further, but just, just for simplicity, plus 6 dB. So that's 99 dB. 93 plus 6, 99 dB. It's close to 100 decibels with one single watt. So for those that say that they need 100 watts for the tweeters, again, it's total, total bull. You don't need that much power. 99, 95% of your power is going to be for your subwoofer. The mids and tweets don't need anything. Mid bases, they need a bit more, but your subwoofer is going to eat all of the power in your whole system. So 20, 30 watts for mids and tweets is perfectly fine, and you're not going to clip that amplifier. If you're going to have a 3 or 2.5 kilowatt amplifier for a 1 kilowatt subwoofer, you will never clip it. So my advice is just forget about those gains. They're so overrated. The only time that you need to increase the gain is if you have a low power subwoofer amplifier. For example, if you have like, a, I don't know, 700 watt sub and 700 watt amplifier, and then you have a source that has lower voltage that your amplifier inputs, then yes, you would need to increase the gains just to kind of match it and trying to kind of max out. But power is cheap. Guys, you can get a quality one kilowatt amplifier for, I don't know, 200 bucks or so. There's absolutely no reason to buy equipment that is low on power. And at the same time, there is no reason to buy super powerful amplifiers for your mid ranges and tweeters. So for mids and tweets, do not set the gains at all. 
turn them all the way down and only increase a little bit if you're missing some level because if you're gonna max out the gains on the amplifier that feeds in your tweeters and it's gonna output i don't know 60 watts and you need one watt to be super loud then in the dsp you'll have to pull everything down by 10 15 db and it's pointless keep your gains down keep your channel gain up simple as that so i don't know hope that helps but setting the gains is not as simple if you want to do it properly you have to look at your channel gain you have to look at the oeq but my advice get more power get a high voltage source and just keep your gains all the way down thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you in the next one